Well, things are just going from bad to worse out here. I uh, redid the uh, seal up top there, and now it's leaking like 10 times worse. <laughs> I got staining going on the roof there. It's just dripping. I've got water coming down here. Like I am at a loss here. It's like it is ridiculously hard rain right now. Like those little that little cap on there must just be doing nothing. It's basically like just having a four inch hole into your cabin. I'm just Oh man, it's really discouraging. Look at this, it's just like a stream of water pouring down this chimney here. I gotta go put a tarp or something up there. This is like out of control. What the hell is going on? So I went up and I looked on the roof and I used the wrong sealant. <laughs> I just read this stuff. I, the guy said it was high heat sealant. Uh, it's not sealant, it's cement, which I kind of was like, cement, is that what I want when I bought it? And, and when I was applying it, I was like, oh, this looks a bit weird, like it, had a pastier vibe to it, less silicone-y. And I just looked up on the roof and I was like, I'm pretty sure I sealed this. And the whole gasket looks like there's nothing even there. Like it basically just washed off. So essentially I have um, that, that uh, whole gasket that goes around the pipe and screwed down to the roof, uh, you know, the sealant's all just washed right out. So it's essentially, I put a, a gasket on the roof that doesn't have any sealant underneath it. So the water is essentially just getting underneath and pouring into the cabin. Uh, getting kind of worse by the minute, and the rain does not look like it's going to stop anytime soon, so... Can't really go up there and seal it to a wet surface, so it has to be dry. So I'm kind of just at the mercy of the weather here. Waiting for this uh, torrential rain to stop and stop wrecking my cabin. <laughs> this is a nightmare. Absolute nightmare. So I woke up to even more rain, but thankfully, just before my family arrived for the weekend, I had about a half hour break in the rain. I ran up on the roof toweled it off dry, cleaned off this old nasty sticky whatever the crap sealant I put on there that was not actually sealant, and installed the chimney boot gasket thingamadoogie uh, with the proper Sikaflex sealant, and that seems to have solved the problem. Still getting a tiny little bit of wind-driven rain coming down the chimney pipe itself, but I'm hoping to fix that issue with a custom chimney cap that blocks the dominant wind from driving the rain down the chimney. So after the whole anchor fiasco from the last video, I decided to take a week or two and just decompress, enjoy some time up at the lake with my family, not really think about that haunting memory. I'm talking with my neighbor to see if it's feasible to uh, send a diver down to see if he could recover the ropes or the buoys. But if it doesn't seem very cost effective, I'm pretty much just going to have to start all over again and do things a little differently this time and hopefully not lose a second anchor. Stay tuned. I'm going to make it fall down the valley right there. Okay, so where's your escape path? Uh, run this way. All right, we don't want this tree in the way of our escape, huh? That just got busted. Yeah, gotta get that out of the way. Then you can, like, run through here. Okay. Whoa. Maybe. Oh, Brandon, you want to go down? We're going to run right out through here when the tree starts to fall, okay? So, key is you want to notch the tree like this. 
right? Like yeah. cut a V into it, and then you want to cut a V into the middle and meet in the middle. And when it gets skinny enough, the tree will begin to fall. Okay, so I'll demonstrate how to notch it on the front side, and then you can do the back side, okay? Stand back. Okay. So you notch in, do a couple strokes from the, the top, and you come up from the bottom like this. Top down. Okay. Up from the bottom. That's a really dead one. Yep. Okay, so now we got a good notch there. Now you want to do the same thing from the back, okay? Take your gloves off. Stand beside it, like this, okay, just like you're chopping wood, then you slide your hand down, you want to start right at the same height, right about there, right, so you start, chop, 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 now you come up from the bottom, chop, 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 okay, from the top, you work your way down until all the chips start to fall out, okay, and you follow, follow that line right there, and just keep sucking your blade in there, up from the bottom, okay? Okay. <gasps> a little more power, just a little bit more. That's better, buddy. Yeah, real good. You can swing a bit more now. There you go. It's really shaking the tree. Look at the top. Always make sure you guys, you look at the top of the tree and, and when it starts to lean, you say, Timber! And then we'll run away, right? I'll look at the top and say Timber, okay? okay. Oh, I see movement. Keep going. Keep hitting it. Oh, Timber! there we go. You did it, buddy! Well, guys, our first boat plane yeah. landing at the property. How cool yeah. is that? Cool, cool, cool. Oh, this is my best friend. Yeah, we're going to turn around, and then this one's going to land, too. Here we go. There's two? There's two. <laughs> oh. I know. My God. I don't know where we're going to dock both of them. But <laughs> one's here. There's one's two. here. Sort of. is sinking with the, the frame rate from the camera and so it looks like the prop's not spinning but it actually is spinning. That's pretty cool.
Recently, a friend of a friend reached out to me about incorporating our family story into a docu-series about Kenmore Air. My wife and I met at a summer camp where Kenmore Air flies and we shared our story with them and they wanted to highlight it in this little docu-series that they're going to be doing. So I'll share more information about the docu-series once it's released. And I just want to say a huge thank you to Kenmore Air for the fun experience of coming out to our property for the day. You like that, Ash? Good one. Good one. <laughs> Try again. <laughs> Try again, please. Yeah. Can you? Can you? Can you? This is going to be the future site of my cabin. Uh, we're just up on top of the rock bluff here, overlooking the lake behind you. And I just feel that this is the spot. So I've taken down a few of these deadfalls here, but there's a ton more brush and debris along the, the woods here that need to be cleaned up. And I know you guys are probably sick of just chainsawing and burning videos, but I don't really care what you think <laughs> or what you want. Uh, I gotta do what I gotta do to get this property livable for my family. And uh, the only way I can do that is just to share the journey as it happens, you know, total full disclosure, you know, and that is, that means that there's just a lot of work doing a, the same boring task over and over and over and over again uh, in order to move on to the next task. Uh, the other reason why I'm just gonna be chainsawing and burning in this video, like many other videos, <laughs> is because the weather is starting to warm up here and there's going to be a burn ban probably coming into place once we get a few weeks of really hot dry weather um, we've just been having nothing but rain so everything is really wet right now and there's no forest fire risk so i want to try and burn up a lot of this debris which is essentially like a tinder pile just laying on the forest floor on my property here and i don't want it to burn up what I build here, right? So I need to clear that space and create a bit of a buffer. You know, the, if there was, you know, worst case scenario, a forest fire to come through here, uh, there wouldn't be a lot of fuel on the forest floor for it to carry through the woods here. And the canopy is high enough that the fire, fire shouldn't reach the top of the trees. So I'm just gonna be clearing some of these dead, standing dead trees, all the small stuff. You know, I don't like to cut down live trees if I don't have to, but thinning out the forest is actually really good for the forest. And the trees, the stunted trees that are really small, they're all kind of dying out anyways because the canopy is blocking the sun from getting to the shorter trees. So they might still be alive, but they're not gonna live long-term. 
So I'm just gonna thin them out now and that creates more air space, lets more sunlight in for the bigger trees as well so that you know they can become even more firmly established. And this is like a natural process uh, for good forestry practice. So I know you guys might be all green peace and don't cut any trees down, but that's just not reality. You guys have been watching too many Disney movies. Uh, so I'm gonna thin out the forest here. Nature actually thins out forests naturally too with forest fires. And uh, lots of trees can't even germinate and, and their seeds can't germinate without the heat of a forest fire. So um, the fact that a forest fire has already come through here to thin this forest um, is proof of that. And so now I'm just gonna clean up the mess that that left behind, which is just a ton of dead debris on the forest floor. So, time for some chainsaw and burning. Again now. There, this one here is nice and flat. That should split up. Wow. I'm trying to like bolster it up. There you go. Okay, take your time. That was pretty good. Okay, when you go too fast, that's when you can slip and hurt yourself. Most parents wouldn't even let their six-year-old touch an axe, let alone practice until they get good. Good work, buddy. Daddy, Nice work. Five! Nice work, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Good work, Tyler. Like, so the boys actually just started using their axes, practicing with the axes yesterday. Yes. Just yesterday they were doing their chopping for pretty much the first time they've ever done it. And you can already see just in one day of chopping how confident and accurate they've become with their skills. And they chopped a tree earlier. And their technique. Hmm. This worked. Even they chopped the tree. Bog. Five, four, three, two, one. There you go. Now we do the third job all done. Ha ha ha. That's one. Ha ha ha. Let's put that other one end, <laughs> end to end. <laughs> end to end. Stand it up. End to end. The way I showed you. The way I showed you. Okay. Dad. Bump. What you? What you want to? Good job. There you go. Nice work. Ha ha ha. Nope. Bennett, it's your turn. I can only imagine the comment section Karen's when they see my boys using an axe. Oh, it's so dangerous. Nice picture, nice picture Dad. It's amazing how few really lame days up at the lake. In the rain making mistakes all gets washed away when I got my family up here with me in the sunshine boys chopping wood enjoying that crackling fire not bad at all just need a little perspective shift Not a bad swing spot, hey buddy? Yeah. I love it. You put it up. 
Well, today is my boy Carver's 10th birthday and we're doing a family paddle together. What a dog, lay down, Zoe. Sit down. Last thing we need is a dog tipping our canoe. <laughs> Looking good there, Carver. 